Well, welcome to Winter Motor Raceway for round number three of the High Tech Drift All Star Series. And we've got a brand new layout that's never been done before. I'm Matt Cavanagh and Tony Bishop. Exciting times for round number three in this reverse track layout. Yeah, Matty Cav, it is a completely new layout at Winton. This is the second time we've been here this year. So we thought we'd mix things up a little bit and push the boundaries. This layout is all about the outside clipping zones, getting drivers nice and close to the door. Lots of tyre smoke, lots of action. Let's check out a track preview. James Abbott on board with the S15 Nigel as he clicks through the gears and he has to initiate nice and fast as well in this layout. Yeah, that's it. Right over the start-finish line is the initiation point. It's a big flick down into turn one. Outside zone. Snap transition. Outside zone again. And then one last transition to the final corner. Another outside zone. So it's all outside zones. And there's the cabin full of tyre smoke. That is what it's all about. And we'll have to see how our competitors go through this. They've never had the opportunity to try this out before at any other event. And we've never seen them go in this direction before. Very exciting late. We're really thankful to everyone at Benella Auto Club and the Winter Motor Raceway for making this happen here. Let's have a look at how the ladder has panned out after our qualifying session. Of course, Brody Maher will be there on his own. Number one qualifier. Isn't he getting back into title contention? Great to see Mo Hawley back, the Victorian. Here we go, the tyre works entry, and he doesn't have the big turbo on the side this time round. And here, the V8 roar as he goes through, but Ben Hodges doing a nice job emulating him here through turn number three, gets right on the back of the S13. Let's check out the tries replay. Moa Hawley hitting that real wide outside zone, giving Benny Hodges every bit of room to catch up and get into that door pocket, which is what it is all about. Really nice lead run, and that's... Yeah, that's a nice way to finish. Well, Benny Hodges is going to have to lead us out this time. He was second on the podium when we came here for round one. And what can he do is he leads away from Mo Hawley. And look at the gap he's opened up at the link. He's the US 15. He drives on really, really quickly on his out of clipping zone. Mo has to cut the corner to get that proximity right down. And as they come through the final corner, he's showing not a lot of angle there from Benny Hodges, but a big advantage in that first corner. Look, let's check out this tries replay. Benny Hodges just absolutely rocketed away from the start-finish line. That meant Moa Hooley had a hell of a job to try and catch up. He's allowed to trim the line just a little bit, but a really commanding run from Ben Hodges in the Link ECU S15. We'll move on. Jason Ferrer now taking on Benny Mir with Ferrer leaders out in the Keeper Reed R33. Yeah, nice and wide again. He's hit, really hitting that first outside zone. Really solid. Benny Mears, again, he's got to play catch up. He's just looks like coming through turn two. Had to recorrect just a little bit, but a really solid lead run from Jason Ferrin in the Keeper Reap machine. He does really well, doesn't he? The speed here, of course, the Victorian local, where we see Benny Mears got to come down from Newcastle. But we've been at Winton a number of times, but we've never done this layout. So every driver getting used to the different conditions, especially coming over that hill into the first corner. They're carrying a lot of speed they need to wash off. But Benny Mears, the big V8 powers up. Let's see how he goes in the lead run. Looking a lot more comfortable this time as he throws it in. Gets it wide of the wheel, almost goes off the track, but he manages to stay on. But look at Jason Fair, and he's right there and really comfortable in the chase position. He's eyeballing Benny Mir. He's seeing him hitting the zone. It's giving him all the room. Benny Mir's put down a really good lead run, giving Jason every opportunity to chase nice and close. And that is a really solid chase run from Jason Ferrin. Just Matty Murphy just dropping that wheel. It's going to be a deduction in the chase position. He obviously just thrown it in really hard into turn one, trying to get close, and he's just overshot the track just a little bit. He'll have to play in the front position. He'll have to do the same thing and, and catch right up. We'll have to wait and see. Can Warwick Hill hold on this one? He can't afford to make any mistakes. He's got a big advantage. Can Warwick Hill hold on this one? He can't afford to make any mistakes. He's got a big advantage. But Matt Murphy... Oh no, Murphy gets the wheels off in the dirt again. Huge dirt turbo and they're side by side over the final corner and it's going to be another big disadvantage for him. Yeah, let's check out this tries replay. Matty Murphy looking really solid off the start finish line. He was just clicking gears and then initiating, but that overall speed has just sent him off into the dirt. Warwick Hill just being able to sit in the second position and just smoke the tires, getting over the finish line. Really good chase. Sam Mudge and Kurt Dunn. This one's going to be a fantastic one to watch because Sam Mudge has been really... Showing how efficient he is behind the wheel in the last couple of rounds, just improving every time we go out. His home track here, you see Mudge with a big lead run. Kurt Dunn falls off a little bit in the SR20 powered S15 and uh, unfortunately uh, just doesn't quite keep that proximity throughout this run. Yeah, looking like Sam Mudge putting the back of the car in all the right positions. Kurt just seemed to struggle a little bit through the transition between one and two. 
Let's flick him around the other way and let Kurt have a lead run. We've got Sammy Mudge chasing him down. And oh, he's just run wide. Run wide at turn one and through the ditch. That is a very unforgiving ditch off the side track of turn one. Just seemed to look, lose control of steering there on initiation. Just not as settled on the initial flick in. Yeah, Sam Mudge, big advantage. And we'll get the win there. Well, we're here for the top 16 battles now. Hey, let's have a look at the high-tech or pro category. Brady Murray will take on Benny Hodges. Chris Saddle will take on Matt Grice. Dale Campaign and Jordan Putkins will battle it out. Aaron Jawar's back against Jason Ferrin. That's going to be a fantastic one. Then it's Roger Anson taking on Warwick Hill. James Abbott will battle out with Jordan Sanderson. Brad Tui against Sam Mudge. And Patrick Barley will take on Scott Shembury. All right, we're going to get into the next battle here. We have Brody Ma up against Ben Hodges. Brody Ma lifting a front wheel on turn one initiation. A fantastic entry. Benny Hodges got to do everything he can to put the foot to the floor and catch up. What an absolute rocket ship Brody Ma is piloting. Let's have a look at the tri replay. Brody Ma has that car absolutely gripped up the Bonnie, Bonnie Energy S13. And Benny Hodges doing everything he can to maintain that pace that Brody Ma's laying down. What a fight back in the championship. This is going to be last year's champion. He's chasing down Benny Hodges. This one, Hodges goes wide. The wheel comes up with this. A dirt. Oh, no. Wheels off on the dirt again. Yeah, Benny Hodges under a lot of pressure there from Brody Ma in the chase position. He knew that he just had to give it everything he had to try and get away from Brody Ma and just overshot the track. Yeah, we're seeing here the tri replay. A lot of them carrying a lot of speed in that first corner and you can see how gripped up Benny Hodges is, but the wheel drops off in the dirt. Let's move on to our next battle. Chris Sadler, the Queenslander, will take on the local guy, Matty Grice, in the Commodore. A couple of them going at it, but the big Commodore Uta, Chris Sadler out in the lead. Nice angle as he flicks through here. It looks like it's a little bit slower than Matty Grice, who's managing to emulate him really nicely through this section of the course. And look at the two Holdens go across the finish line. Heaps of tyres, mate. The crowd are loving it here. Yeah, great lead run from Chris Sadler, just hitting the outside clipping zones. It is a much bigger car. It takes a lot longer time to transition, but Matty Grice just hassling him in the second place position there. Let's see how Matty Grice goes in the big turbo LS. So much angle, he washes off speed, almost stalls the car up, and Chris Sadler has to do some evasive action there. Unfortunately, it stops him, though. Yeah, look, Matty Grice has thrown it into big angle. He's using the steering lock to correct the car, but it's just slowed down his overall momentum, and Chris Sadler's pulled out of the battle. Here we go, Dale Campaign, who was very successful last time he was here at Winton as part of the High Tech Drift All-Star Series, taking on Jordan Putkins, who got on the podium in round number one here, but it's a different layout, and how are they going? Dale Campaign gripped up, and look at him drive away in the GH Haulage S13. Yeah, look, <laughs> Dale Campaign, after having a bit of time off, absolutely putting it online, going big angle, big outside zones, and Jordan Putkins just had to back it off a little bit to avoid any contact. Well, we'll get on board now. Check it as they go through the gears. Dale Campaign sticks it on the door. Putkins, they winds it up. Gets the angle on coming down over the hill into turn number one. The outside clipping zone. And Dale Campaign just puts his nose on the inside, emulates him nicely, maintaining that proximity as they switch back through the final big left-hander. Look how close he gets. Putkins, he's trying to draw every bit of horsepower out of that turbo LS. Yeah, Jordan Putkin stepping up from the Pro-Am category into Pro this round, and he's really putting it on for the Pro-Class pro drivers. But Dale Campaign, absolutely dominant in the chase. Aaron Jawar, he's a big fan favourite here. Look at him. He puts on the smoke show, and Jason Ferrin's going to have to do everything he can to stay with him. But no, Aaron Jawar spins out, overcooks it, and Ferrin almost made contact, did he? Great driving to avoid a major incident. I mean, Aaron Dewar's thrown it into really big angle. He's obviously carrying a lot of speed down that front straight, and the pendulum effect between turn one and turn two has just caught him out. Great avoidance by Jason. You yeah, could see Aaron Dewar just puts a hand up, says, yep, my wrong. Here we go, Jason Ferrin to lead us out now in the R33, and he gets it out nicely out of clipping zone, right on the edge of the track. How good was that? Dewar gets right up close, but then has to back off, doesn't give him quite enough room to switch back, and you can see him drop back in proximity, and now he's back on the bay can have a look at both of them having a great time here at winter motor raceway but a big advantage to jason ferron yeah look aaron's knowing full well that he's got to push pretty hard in this battle after uh, turning it around in his lead so he's going he's giving absolutely everything to jason ferron but just overcooked the position there a little bit had to back out to avoid contact we know why they're a crowd favorite though look at aaron jawar and the amount of smoke that car makes well, let's catch up with our battle winner, Jason Ferrin. A little bit of a hairy moment out there. Surprised we avoided it. I think we just, I think I caved his door a little bit when he looped around. Um, but apart from that, everything was good to go. 
Let's move on to our next battle. Roger Anson, who won the first round here at Winton, taking on Warwick Hill, who's been very strong in the Z46 BMW. And I answered so clinical and where he puts the car, wherever the judges wanted, he manages to get that car in position, meeting all those outer clipping zones. Yeah, you can see Roger's car just lifting the front inside wheel coming around that last corner. The car's got so much grip and traction. He's just able to put it nice and wide and just full noise out of that last corner. But take nothing away from Warwick Hill. That was a really impressive chase. Well, Warwick Hill's going to lead us out now and he's been very impressive at the start of this session. Gets the car back. Probably not as much angle as we want to see from him initially, but Roger Anson, the same. Has to really work the steering wheel to make sure he maintains that proximity. A lot of smoke. Hill pushes it out nice and wide here. Lots of tyre smoke, and Anson is right there on the inside of his back quarter. This is what top-level drifting's all about. Just judging the course, getting through, missing the initiation, missing the switchbacks, and just being able to drive side-by-side side with another car. It's so, so impressive to watch. Great battle from Roger. Great vision there from overhead to see where the cars are positioned on the track as well. This brand new layout and the reverse over the hill section and Warwick Hill we're having another look at the Trias replay. The judges really dissecting this, spending a lot of time on that one. The judges were unable to pick these two apart. So Roger Anson and Warwick Hill one more time and now Anson leads out and look at him. Huge angle there as he comes into turn number one. Oh no, he's straightened up there though. Unfortunately, he doesn't fill that out of clipping zone. Warwick Hill doing a nice job right up and close on the back quarter. Roger Anson just opens up a little bit of a gap as he drives away. Could have balked Warwick Hill for a moment there. So this one's going to be another close battle, Tony. Yeah, look, you can see Rogers just had a big correction there at turn one. Turn one is such an important part to get right because it sets up the flow for the rest of the lap. Now, that's going to be a big disadvantage for Roger. You know, it's going to upset Warwick Hill, but he's in the chase position. He's allowed to avoid a contact and avoid an incident, which he's done very well at that. You can see it there. You can just see straightened up. He's had to reinitiate, and then Warwick Hill's right there with him. But it becomes a bit of an unflowy sort of struggle to get back under the right line in the right conditions. Very important, I think, in that first corner too, that you fill that out of clipping zone. Can Warwick Hill do that in the BMW? We'll have to check it out. Here he goes. Initiation in. Out of clipping zone. Keeps it on the bitumen too. We didn't see any dirt flick up. Transition back. But now he has a straight, and it looks like possibly some contact made when they switch back with Roger Anson. Was he too close? Yeah, look, again, same, same thing again. Roger, he's had an error on his lead run. He's got to do everything to try and dominate in the chase position. He's thrown it in real hard behind Warwick. There... Warwick's maybe just a little bit slower on the transition. Roger's gone for the big flick to dive up on the door at the turn two out of zone. And bang, you can just see a bit of bumper touching the rear uh, bash bar. Just the same lead line I've been running all day. Tiny bit of, you know, just slow it down a little bit for that corner. And yeah, I just felt a massive whack in the back. So hopefully it's not too much damage. Hopefully Roger's car's okay as well. James Abbott now taking on Jordan Sanderson, who's been super impressive going in pro-am and pro categories in the last couple of rounds. But James Abbott, well, he's had a couple of fourth place positions. Nigella's back, and can he do it this round? Look at the smoke he's putting on leads away from Jordan Sanderson, open up a huge gap. Really impressive lead run from James Abbott there. It did look like Jordan's just struggled with either a miss shift or something through turn one and two. Let's have another look at the Trias replay. We'll get some overhead vision that's really going to help us dissect this. Flick back. James Abbott really wide and there. Looks like Jordan's just come out of the drift. Maybe just either lost steering or miss shift or something. But that's really going to put him back a little bit. Well, Jordan Sanderson, uh, very professional. He's not going to cave under pressure here in the Zec Nova VE Commodore. Let's see what he can do. James Abbott's going to have to work hard. Oh, no. How much angle? They're off the track. And James Abbott is now out in the dirt. This changes absolutely everything. He had that huge advantage in the lead run. And now Jordan Sanderson will continue on in the ute. Wow, it's just, he was going full noise into turn one. Jordan's just able to pull it up. Maybe there was a little bit of contact from James Abbott. He was coming down really quick at a big rate of knots here. We'll get some overhead vision. Tap. There it is. He's just tapped. Looked like a bit of front wheel to back wheel contact. Sent Jordan off. Mate, James Abbott's just given it everything into that battle. Uh, yeah, look, we did heaps of practice runs together yesterday and this morning, and we'll drive them really well together. Uh, I don't know really what happened there. He said he, he went to a different tyre compound for this battle, and I think I just misjudged it. 
Well, back after a season off, Brad Tui now taking on Sam Mudge. He's been very impressive so far this season, but it was great to see Brad Tui back on the podium in round number one. Round number two had a lot of mechanical failures, but he's been working flat out on the rear end of that car to make sure the diff and the axis stay together. And look at him putting on a show in the Zestino GT86, and he's right out in those outer clipping zones and opens up a gap on Sam Mudge. Yeah, look, it doesn't look like he's had any time off behind the wheel, and he's in fine form this season so far. Brad Tui in the lead position there. Wide outside zones, lots of tyre smoke, but Mudgy just right there hassling him like a little bulldog in that S13. Well, he is like a little bulldog, isn't he? Only he's about six and a half foot tall, so we'll wait till he gets <laughs> out of the car, see what he says about the bulldog comment. Here we go, he leads us out, Sam Mudge. He loves to throw a huge amount of angle, the RB20 singing, and Brad too, he's right there though, and he knows he's got plenty of power under the bonnet, just tucks the nose in again on Sam Mudge. Mudge is doing everything he can to try and drive out of this. Brad Tui is right behind him, but Mudge opens up a little bit of a gap, goes wide, but the dirt comes up off the wheel, and that's probably going to deduct a few points from this run. Yeah, it is a very challenging position to be in when you've got a car with so much horsepower and so much grip in the chase position. You've got to be able to drive that car a little bit slower behind a slow, slightly uh, less gripped up car, but they've avoided all contacts, and it's an impressive run over the finish line. Yeah, this one's going to be a close one. We're checking out the Trias replay once again. They initiate in that first corner. We've seen so many people come into their two fast and just drags them out into the dirt they lose a tyre and once you unsettle that first corner it can go really really wrong Brad Tui puts the rear end right out misses that outer clipping zone that time but Mudge way too wide there just gets a wheel out in the dirt. Uh, it was a, an amazing run David versus Goliath you know the, the RB20 was singing you did your best H how do you feel about the call? Um, I don't know obviously the judges see it best I think Brad's uh, entry was a bit buck wild on the way in there which yeah. sort of messed my run up a little bit but that uh, is what it is I suppose I obviously made a couple of mistakes as well and he must have just got me. Still a good battle, nonetheless. He's just a cool character, isn't he, Sam Mudge? We'll move on to Patrick Barley, though, in the Corvette, taking on Scott Shambry. Two powerhouses. And no, Patrick Barley drops a wheel on the dirt. The Corvette goes off. I think it was two wheels. And Shambry putting the bake on behind the Master Chef. As they go through the final corner, he's returned to form, Scott Shambry. And he is much happier about that car this season. Let's check out the tries replay and just see where it went wrong for Patrick Barley there. He's just gone very deep into turn one and it's just dropped that outside wheel off into the dirt. You've got to keep it on the black stuff for the perfect lead run. But Scott Shembury unfazed in that chase position. Bacon tyres giving us a wave, having a good time. So much smoke in the cabin of both these cars. I don't know how the drivers see. Here we go. Scott Shembury, huge angle coming in. And oh, it's, I can't tell. I didn't see any dirt come up. We'll have to wait and find out what the judges saw. They are right in the correct position to see everything on that corner but look at him the rpm's up and he's out through the final corner but patrick barley didn't let him get away that car is so gripped up that corvette yeah both drivers here we can just see a, a wheel drop they've both done the same wheel drop coming into turn one but patrick did drop it off twice in his lead position both pretty similar through the second half of the circuit we'll see what the judges say some incredible battles in our top 16 of the High Tech Oils Pro category here. Do not go anywhere. We'll be back after this short break. Welcome back to round number three of the High Tech Oils Drift All Star Series from Winton Motor Raceway in Victoria. Let's have a look at our High Tech Oils Pro category top eight. Brody Maher is going to take on Chris Sadler. Dale Campaign will battle out with Jason Perrin. Warwick Hill will battle Jordan Sanderson. And Brad Tui will take on Scott Shembry. But let's get on. Brody Maher leading out Chris Sadler. Look at the gap. He's opened up already. Brody Maher just such a rocket off the line. He is flat through first, second and third gear. And that's what it looks like as a solid initiation into one. Chris Sadler in the big VU unit has got to do everything he can to close that gap, close the distance back up on Brody Maher's door. But that is a textbook lead run from Brody Maher. Let's check out the Trias replay. He is really trying to fight back and hold on to this championship. Brody Maher just a little bit of handbrake in there. He almost goes off the edge of the bitumen, but then he gets back on it. Out of clipping zone, right on the power. Touch a handbrake there as he initiates back in the final corner. Chris Sadler, a little bit slower in this VE, and you can see it move around a lot more compared to what we see Brody Maher, who goes wide in that first corner, but he maintains that proximity once again. Look at the grip levels coming out of the Bonnie Energy S13. For me, Brody Ma, how incredible is he in the chase position at the moment? Yeah, let's have a look at the tries replay. You can really get some good vision from the overhead. You can really see the difference in body weight of these two cars and how they change direction. And the Bonnie Energy S13 is so, so gripped up and it just drives away. Brad Tui looking to see if he can get back on the podium. Around number three, but he spins out coming in the first corner. The speed he carries on in contact made. Scott Shembry 
just touches the back guard there in the Zestina 86 and the hand goes out the window. Great to see the gentleman-like sportsmanship there. Brad Tui knows an error made there. Look how quick he threw it in. It spun around so fast. Yeah, you can see just the weight shift, such an aggressive weight shift from that first flick. Just with Shembury, obviously, a bit of contact with Brad. What's the story? The wheel was a bit buckled, so we just changed it off for another one just to be safe. But um, other than that, I think it's pretty good. Yep. Should be all right. Well, we'll move him around. Scott Shembury will lead us out. He's been back in form in the high-tech oils. 350Z, and he's on the bake again. But look at Brad Tui right on the back court. He gets lost in the smoke for a second, but he appears again. You can see the orange livery coming out. And Scott Shembury now opens up a small gap. Huge angle through the final quarter, and Brad Tui almost went over that clipping zone. Scott Shembury on absolute fire today from the word go. He's rocketing down that front straight, sticks it in the outside zone, plenty of tyre smoke, you can tell. He is foot to the boards. That is 800 horsepower plus 350Z V8 twin turbo machine. And I don't know how Brad Turi could see a single thing in that chase position. No, he was absolutely smoked out. Dale Campaign, though, he's going to lead out over Jason Ferrin, and they come to some fireworks last time they were here last season, going the opposite direction up the hill right there. Will they keep it on the bitumen? Will they keep the panels apart? Dale Campaign doing a nice job in the lead. Transitions back to the final corner. Jason Ferrin just allowing enough room there in the 33, and they go through the final corner. That was a great battle. These guys do have a bit of history back and forth over the previous years, but both drivers in form today, driving very, very well. Dale Campaign, very solid lead run, and Jason Ferrin is right there within a couple of car lengths. The switch back into the final corner, all looks very solid from both of these guys. Very impressive battle. Dale Campaign looks like he's just got a little bit more grip in that car. Last time Jason was Ferrin was in his barrel wags. We know he has a lot more horsepower under the bonnet than the R33, and really challenging him through here. I think he's keeping the foot a lot more to the floor there to try and maintain the pace of Dale, but Campaign does a great job, gets all the outer clipping zones, and coming out of South Australia, we know all those drivers that come and compete in the High Tech Drift All-Star Series do a fantastic job. Can he do it in the chase position, though? Jason Ferrin laying it down in the 33. Does it nicely, goes the outer clipping zone, but look how close Dale Campaign wants to get a touch of break there just as they switch back, and he's right on the side of Ferrin as they come through the final corner, and side by side over the finish line. I would hate to be a judge for these couple of battles. It is so close between these guys. Really textbook lines in both lead positions from both drivers and both chases were equally as good. It's going to come down to the wire from these two battles. Fantastic driving. This is what we came to Winton to see, these fantastic battles. A new layout that no one's ever got the chance to drive before. Jordan Sanderson leads us out in the Zec Nova Australia V Ute over Warwick Hill. And Hill just trying to stick it to the back guard, but no, over rotates, the car unloads and nearly spins out, which will give Jordan Sanderson a huge advantage. Yeah, we'll track out the tries replay here. Looks like Jordan's just touched a little bit wide off the outside of the track. Has that upset Warwick Hill a little bit? Has he miss and he just anticipated uh, that, that Jordan was going to run wide, so he's backed out of it a little bit. It's so hard to tell. You're carrying so much speed down that hill that you just don't want to make contact. You want to protect your car. You want to initiate and switch back. And Warwick's just gone to full lock. He's just stuck on that full lock position on the uh, switch back. Hasn't this new layout really tested some of our pro drivers? Hill now in the lead over Sanderson. Sanderson just needs to hold on. Does he have an advantage? Doesn't he? We'll have to wait and see what the judges say. Hill and the Zestino E46. Nice and on the power through the final corner. He stuck to the lines. Wasn't huge angle there. Sanderson, though, didn't do anything wrong in the chase position. Probably didn't have the proximity that he wanted. But we'll wait and see what the judges say. Was it a big advantage in that first run? That is what we've got to try and figure out through this tri replay. Yeah, look, Warwick Hill really strong in the lead position once they switched around again. You know, you make your mistake in your chase, you want to put down an absolute dynamite lead run, and it was not bad at all. Let's see what the judges are going to say. They're going to have another look at the replay. They just want to critique every little part of this lap. Did Warwick Hill not quite get into that first zone early enough? Is Jordan closer? You know, he's not making any errors. The front wheels are in a solid position. He's not correcting. There's a lot to it that the judges are picking from these battles. Well, it's been a fantastic day here at Winter Motor Raceway. It's round number three of the High Tech Drift All-Star Series. Let's have a look at some of the highlights of the battles earlier, and weren't they fantastic in the High Tech All's Pro category? Coming up shortly, of course, our Zoot Performance Pro-Am about to hit track. And you can see up on our screen, Warwick Hill, he's back on song. Good to see him after a couple of tough rounds leading into the High Tech Drift All-Star Series. It might have gone his way here coming into Winton. 
to get some of our Pro-Am category as well out there, all thanks to Zoo Performance. Great supporters and really encouraging our up-and-coming drifters to get into the sport and move their way up into the Pro categories. We've seen that through, obviously, Ben Hodges and Matt Murphy this year with the prizes they gave away at the end of last season. So can't wait to see our Zoo Performance Pro-Am drivers out on track very shortly. Some of the highlights from earlier, Ken Rackler there just spinning out, and he has been fantastic this season as well. Now let's take a look at our high-tech Zoo Performance Pro-Am category. Top four, the Battle of the Jordans. Jordan Putkins versus Jordan Sanderson and Sam Mudge versus Anthony Romano. Well, these are going to be some great battles. Remember, the Jordans were one and two on the podium. Putkins took the win last time over Sanderson. Can he do it again? But let's have a look at this battle first. Sam Mudge leading out of Anthony Romano, who's made his way through the concreter from Victoria. He's really wide in the 180. I'm just disappointed his BA Falcon's not here. Look, he normally does pilot a big Falcon-bodied car, but look, he has been very, very impressive in the 180SX this weekend, except for now. He's just over-rotated, coming into the top four. He had a couple of buys, missed out on a little bit of battle time this afternoon, and he's just, I reckon, a bit of pressure's just got to him. He's going up against Sammy Mudge in the top four, and that is a really tough competitor to be battling it out against. Sam Mudge looking for some redemption after in the pro category. Unfortunately, didn't make it through into the top four, but this is his home track, Winton. He's done plenty of laps around. He never in this direction, though. So let's see if he can stick it to the door of Anthony Romano. As Romano throws it in the 180, sets himself up nicely, fills that out of clipping zone right on the edge. Mudge gives him plenty of room, but oh, no dirt there. Romano goes a little bit wide. Does he miss this one as well? He does. Goes really wide there as well. Mistakes in both the chase and the lead run. You think Sam Mudge would have a huge advantage here? There's certainly quite a bit of pressure in the lead up to a top four battle. Uh, Anthony Romano's done a great job all day and then yeah, now he's just just dropping a wheel on this corner and then the switch into turn two, it just throws you with so much momentum over the other side of the track but he has been driving like a champion all day. He's just getting to the pointy end of the day and it's just, just got away from him a little bit and Sammy Mudge just cruising on through. Romano joined us down in Calder Park for his first appearance in the High Tech Drift All-Star Series and great to have him come back up here to Winton as well. Uh, we actually saw him in round number one, he's BA Falcon, didn't we? And we love seeing that thing. It's a real Aussie icon and uh, now out in the 180 trying to improve his drifting there, the 180, uh, a better platform really to start from. But here we go. Last time we came to Winton, these were one and two on the podium. He was runner-up, Jordan Sanderson leading out this time over Jordan Putkins and Putkins sticks it to the side of Sanderson. Sanderson transitions back nicely, fills the outer clipping zone. Again, look at it, a huge space, but he's over the witch's hat's out on the dirt and Putkins with a big advantage. Both of these guys doing both categories this weekend. They're getting a lot of driving time, switching between tyres, and this is what it's all about. So the flick, Jordan Putkins in the chase position, just a bit unsettled, but Jordan Sanderson has just get it absolutely dialed, but he's just given it too much sauce coming around this last corner. It's a big throw, and he's pushed it wide into the cones. Jordan Putkins just sitting there going, hey, mate, you've got to keep it on the black stuff. Did Sanderson even lift? That is my question. It looked like he just thought, you know what, we are putting on the biggest smoke show you've ever seen and we're just going to hold it flat. Maybe he's been hanging out with Aaron Juara a bit too much, I think, just trying to put that huge tyre smoke show on. Here we go. You can see a replay up here, all thanks to Tri-Ace Tyres. He comes back here. You didn't see much handbrake at all, and it's wide, huge power, but the car not as gripped up, obviously, in the Pro-Am category. Only running the radial tyres or your street tyres on these cars, not running those semi-slicks. So maybe that's where it's brought him unstuck. He would know with the extra grip from the semi-slick, if he got on the power there, that would drive through the corner nicely. This time it's gone wide. and Going to lead him out this time. Big initiation over the start-finish line. It is a lot of speed carrying down into the outside zone at Turn 1, looking under control and nice and solid. Jordan. Putkins in the lead this time. Jordan Sanderson under a bit of pressure this time. Got to play catch up. Got to get up on the door. But a really solid lead run from Jordan Putkins. Yeah, we'll check out the Trias replay. Putkins didn't have to do anything spectacular on this run. He just had to try and hit those clipping points and make sure that he stayed on the track. Sanderson doing a nice job on the Zek Nova Australia V. Commodore Ute behind. Putkins just puts the car through. It's not huge angle, not huge pace either, but he doesn't need to do that after the mistake from Sanderson. He's got a huge advantage, gets through the run, and I'd expect he'll take the win here. Yeah, that's it. You, you're going to be pretty comfortable coming into this battle, just being able to put it online. You've got a serious contender right behind you, but it's it's so much more comfortable being in that position where you can just drive your line comfortably and just get through unscathed car in one piece. Well, you know, if he's going to go on to that top two battle, he's going to be the top of the Jordans again here at Winton. We have a look here as a lead run from Sanderson. He went really wide right out. 
Well, a lot of our drivers out there running spotters up on the hill so they can talk to the driver, tell them where to put the car, where they're in advantage, and it really does help. We caught up with Jason Ferrin's crew, Josh Rogers, right now down there in the pits. You're spotting for Jason. Yep. Um, you've also been a judge for high tech. Yep. You've got a lot of experience. What does spotting mean and what are you actually doing for him? So basically through, throughout the course of the weekend, Jason's practice, it's about getting an outside point of view and telling him what he's doing right, and what he's doing wrong, wrong, what he can work on throughout the course, whether he's filling zones, whether he's uh, being aggressive enough. So I'm um, giving a lot of feedback outside in a different point of view that he doesn't see. He might think he's doing the right thing in the car, but he could be doing the complete wrong thing. And the judges can see that, I can see that, so I can tell him what to do. Yeah. And then obviously you're like a, a relay between the judges and... Yeah, yeah, so I'll go ask the judges a lot of questions, pick their brains on what they want to see. I'll go back to the pits and help Jason, help him understand what he needs to do on the track. Do not go anywhere, we're down to the top four in our Zoo Performance Pro-Am and High Tech Oils Pro categories. We're going to be back after this short break. Welcome back to Winter Motor Raceway. We're here for round number three of the High Tech Drift All-Star Series in Victoria. And we've had plenty of action, but we're down to our top four now, Tony. And it's getting super exciting. Both categories putting on an absolute show here at Winton Raceway. The Bonnie Energy S13 looking really gripped up. Brody Ma at the steering wheel of that machine, just driving away from Chris Sadler in the VEU. What an absolute rocket ship dominating performance in the lead position. We'll have to wait and see whether Dale Campaign can take it to him. Last time here, he was dominant, won the round last season. So can he take it to Brody Ma, who's trying to fight back in this championship? Unfortunately, in round number one, had huge mechanical issues. Fought back to get on the podium in third position in round number two and looking to see if he can get back on that top step. Yeah, Dale Campaign and Jason Ferrin putting on an absolutely phenomenal pair of battles today. Both drivers hitting all the clipping points, getting real close side-by-side -side action. This is what our top-level drifting category is all about. You can see there, of course, he's got the spotter working in the background. We caught up with Josh just before and making sure Jason Ferrin puts the 33 where it needs to go from the judge's perspective as well. Very different from being in the car to being outside and watching. But Dale Campaign, look how close he gets in his car, willing to risk all the panels. We saw it last year and not afraid to put it side by side with Jason Ferrin. Now, Brad Tui, we thought he was on the comeback again. He did so well around number one here, but unfortunately, just overcooked it a little bit and we see the car just unload on the suspension and spin around in that first corner. It's really put him at a disadvantage. Yeah, Scott Chembury in the chase in that position. He has been absolutely on fire all day and we're really keen to see what he can deliver in the top battles. This is a rerun vision of the Dale campaign Jason Farron battle and these guys were so hard to split, the judges had all of their work cut out for them today. And our High Tech Oils Pro category top four is Brody Maher taking on Dale campaign followed by Jordan Sanderson, who's going to battle it out with Scott Shembury. You can see how gripped up these cars are as they go into turn number one. Brody Maher sticks it right in that outer clipping zone. Dale Campaign doesn't push too much on the inside there, just does a nice job with the speed to emulate what Brody Maher's doing. These guys are so evenly matched in their skill set when it comes to drifting. I can't wait to see them turn this around. We'll have another look at the Tri-Ace replay. Look how wide Brody Maher wants to go in the Bonnie Energy 1VR. And the wheel's up in the air again. We can see so much daylight. That is gripped up. I do not know what he's done to the suspension setup of this car, but how well does it just get that power to the ground? Wide, almost a wheel off. Dale Campaign throwing everything at it in the GH Holy S13. And he switches back nicely, fills that clipping zone there in turn two. It's the final corner. He might have a slight advantage here. win out of that. Brody Maher will have to battle out. Can he get third position again? We'll wait and find out. Scott Shembury's back on fire. What's he going to do against Jordan Sanderson? Jordan Sanderson really commanding in the lead position. Oh, he has dropped the wheel. That is going to give him a pretty big deduction at the top level. And he's off the track. That drop at turn one has really sent him wide at turn two. You just can't lose your mojo coming into turn one. It's critical. Absolutely critical to get it right. He's thrown it in hard. He knows he's got Shembury right behind him. And that momentum there has just thrown him off the backside of the track at turn number two. How unfortunate for Jordan Sanderson. He's been looking strong all day. 
Scott well, Chambry under control. I want to look at this, mm. though, because Jordan Sandy gets away with it. Now, on a horsepower to weight ratio, you think Scott Chambry would have the jump on him. So are we seeing a mechanical gremlin starting to come into the high-tech 350Z, maybe? We'll have to wait and find out if we can get some news down there in the pits. But he will get the advantage there this time. Look at it. The bumper's hanging off. He doesn't care. Chambry's taking this all the way. He's going to cook a race on those back tyres. But he doesn't get away from Jordan Sanderson. But now he's lost in the smoke. Sanderson appears out of there in the V. Commodore U. Scott Chambry, though, with huge pace through the final corner. Is he a little bit shallow, possibly? We'll have to wait and find out. This view is really going to show us. Yeah, look, Jordan Sanderson a lot closer coming into turn one. It's all looking pretty good. Ah, there. Scott Shembry's cut the midline through part of turn two, and that's going to be really hard for Jordan to chase, but he's still there. He didn't let him get away, even with that enormous amount of tyre smoke. Well, the problem for Jordan Sanderson there is he went off the track in that lead run, so that is pretty much nil points for him. So Scott Shembry with a massive advantage he didn't have to do anything silly. He didn't fill those outer clipping zones all the way. Didn't go right out to the edge of the track either. So it wasn't a great run from Scott Shembry. And I'm still skeptical about that moment where he took off behind Jordan Sanderson. We'll have to wait and find out if we can find out what's going on down in the pits. Let's move on to our Zoop Performance Pro-Am Top 4 Battles now. This is going to be the battle for third position between Jordan Sanderson, Anthony Romano and Jordan Putkins. Can he go back on the top against Sam Mudge? Let's go for the battle for third position. Anthony Romano in the lead this time. That is a big throw into turn one. Jordan Sanderson in his VEU right there beside him. Can he just keep this lap together? Anthony Romano under a lot of pressure coming into this battle, but he is absolutely solid. Running the wide line, looking fantastic. Let's check out the tries replay. What a change from Anthony Romano. Look at this run from him in the 180. And he gets it right in position, that outer clipping zone. And Sanderson with a little bit of a straightener, looks like, just there. I think the change from going from pro to pro-am and a big lock-up on the brakes here with a foot brake as he goes through turn number two. And Romano just pulls away from him in the 180. And a bit of an advantage for me for Romano. Definitely different spec vehicles coming into this battle. The 180 is very much a basic sort of street level car and he's going up against a juggernaut in Jordan Sanderson. But look, Anthony Romano is putting it right there side by side with him. He is going to take it to him right to this final battle. What a fantastic run. Re really impressive run by Jordan Sanderson in the lead that time. Let's have a look at the Trias replay. And you know it's better to sacrifice some of your line than it is proximity. And that's what Anthony Romano does. Goes in a little bit shallow into turn number one, but closes the proximity up on Jordan Sanderson. Sanderson doing a nice job in the VE Commodore Ute. And he drives it out. Romano sacrifices that line again, but closes the proximity down a little bit. And... Wow, but what a lead run it was from Anthony Romano. I think that's my advantage for me. That's where I take away from this battle. He opened up a gap, didn't he, Sanderson? He's got huge horsepower in the front compared to the SR. The big V8 just starts to get the legs and drive away over the hill. I've got to watch out for that little bit of dirt there on turn number two. It can get very, very loose and could bring some of our drivers unstuck a little bit later. We'll have to wait and find out. But... We'll see who's going to be in third position very shortly. Sam Mudge leads us out, though, over Jordan Putkins, who was on the podium last time here at Winton. Sam Mudge flat out down the front straight into turn number one. He's looking very solid. He may have come out of the turn one zone just a little bit earlier, and Jordan Putkins has lost the drift. Let's check out the tries replay. Let's see what happened. Sam Mudge throws it in in the S13. You can see he gets it nicely there. Transitions back. Putkins very shallow and foot break there. Lots of angle from Sam Mudge. And Putkins has made a bit of a mistake. Was he put off a little bit by Sam Mudge? So Sammy's come in wide. He's thrown it in at the first uh, outside zone. But here, he's, he's certainly he's running that mid line. That's going to be a really hard line to chase. He's just come up a bit short, and I reckon that's put Jordan Putkins off just that little bit. Yeah, he's missed that out of clipping zone, Sam Mudge. Really can tell by that drone shot above. And Putkins will lead us out this time. Can he take an advantage out of this? Big speed, of course, the Turbo LS taking on the poor 2-litre RB20. Jordan Putkins putting in a really good initiation. He gets out into the outside zone of turn one on the loud pedal. Lots of tyre smoke you can see. Sam Mudge has got to trim the line and play catch up at this point. Flick back to the last corner. Jordan Putkins putting it out nice and wide. And Sammy Marge getting really, really close. The vision down the front straight here. You'll see it one more time. Nice and wide from both drivers. Sam Mudge just, yeah, lagging back just that little bit. Might have just been the getaway from the start line. Jordan Putkins looking really under control. I reckon he's got it this time. In fourth place, we have Jordan Sanderson. Very well done, mate. In P4 in Pro-Am. We're just going to get this all right. So Pro-Am for now. How are you feeling with the result? 
That was good, man. It was a good battle. Ant put it to me, and yeah, it was fun. Look, with the amount of laps that you've been doing today, obviously, brand new layout, the car's feeling good, you've had a good time. It's a credit to you, and fourth place is well deserved today. Uh, well done. Thanks, Dave. Here he is, the character himself, Anthony Romano, position number three, first time entering high tech, first time on the podium. Yep. Very well done, mate. How do you feel? I feel really good. Um, 200 bucks, not bad. This is this is going to uh, Guido Atsis over there. Yeah, Guido. He's the one who changed my gearbox this morning and I was sleeping under the car. So without him, mate, honestly, we'll be stuck. In second place, we have Jordan Putkins, which means Sam Mudge takes out position number one. Jordan, very well done. Wow, what a, you were doing double duties today as well. You're entering in Pro-Am and also in Pro-Class. You've done a heap of laps here today. You must be feeling pretty good about getting a result. Yeah, no, nah, it's good to get up on the um, podium at least and the new layout's good backwards, so hopefully we can run that again. Dominating at Winston Raceway. You'll let the other guys have a chance, but very well done on P2 today. Fantastic driving. And where is the man himself, Mr. Sam Marge? Very well done. Thank you. Got yourself a big check, add some silverware. <laughs> how, do you, how do you feel, mate? Feeling pretty good, mate. Uh, last two rounds, two wins, so it's coming all, all coming together pretty well, I reckon. Great to see our top four there in the Zoo Performance Pro-Am. Congratulations to our winner, Sam Mudge. But let's have a look at our high-tech all pro category, the battle for third position between Brody Ma and Jordan Sanderson. And then it's all down to Dale Campaign and Scott Shembury to see who's going to be on the top step of the podium. But let's get underway with our third place battle. Brody Ma getting away in the lead position. There we go. First, second, third gear. Huge flick down the straight. Jordan Sanderson's right there with him. Let's get through turn one. Yes, nice and wide. Flick back through turn two. Brody Ma putting it on the outside line. Jordan Sanderson right there with him. Looking like a really strong battle. Getting over the finish line. And that is the first part of that battle done. Jordan Sanderson accumulating points in this championship at the moment. He's right up there at the top. He could go away with the points lead after this week with the showings he's had. Let's have a look at our tri replay though. And here you go, the gripped up one via there. Brody Ma lifts the inside wheel once again. Switch back to the outer clipping zone. Nice flow here. Look at the speed he carries into the final corner. And Jordan Sanderson sacrificing some of that line to maintain that proximity and does a really nice job. Both cars just driving side by side. Jordan Sanderson's anticipating, moving the big VAU around exactly as he needs to. This has been a really strong battle for third place. Jordan Sanderson's going to lead us out this time. It has plenty of power behind it. Lifts the wheel again. Sanderson just drops the wheel. He's out on the dirt. Wow, so close to that tyre barrier. He continues on, though, but it set him offline. Wow, Jordan Sanderson obviously just pushing really hard. It's a pointy end of the day. Everything is on the line to get through this battle, and he's just dropped it wide. It looks so close to that tyre barrier. We'll check out the tri replay. Coming down the front straight there, it's a big-bodied car. That is a huge flick. Bang, just drops the wheel off into the dirt. And then again, it must have been so, so close to that white tyre barrier. He's got back on the track, but that is a huge disadvantage. And Brody Mars just sitting there in the pocket, playing with him, getting over the finish line. I think Jordan Sanderson did a real good job when they came out of turn number one there to actually keep the car on the bitumen because we've seen so many cars drop the wheels off and from there they switch back and transition and go wide again, but he's managed to keep it on. I reckon if he had a back bar on there, that would have clipped that tyre barrier. This is what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. Dale Campaign in the lead. Scott Shembury all over the back bumper, tyre smoke left, right and centre, both these guys putting it on the line, this is the final battle of the day and a close one at that, that is the first part, Scott Jembry having an absolute ball, he's waving the hand around, he's having a great time we haven't seen him in this type of form for many, many rounds. Here we go. Let's have a look at the tri replay. He leads out Dale Campaign of the GH Haulage S13. And look how gripped up it is. He gets to that outer clipping zone really nicely. Shembury, a bit of foot break there just to allow the transition back. Really nice proximity as they go into the final corner, putting a show on here. And this is what we've been waiting for. This huge final battle. 
here for round number three of the High Tech Drift All-Stars Series. Have a look at the shots from overhead. Very aggressive on the switchback here. Dives right up on the door, right inside the pocket. That is what we want to see, that switchback and the aggressive dive. Top-level drifting from these guys. Yeah, he's really happy with that one, Scott Shembury. Dale campaign, he is super focused at the moment. Can he do it again? Shembury wants to get a win. It's been a while. Can he do it in the high-tech oil 350Z? Oh, no, the car slows down for a second. We spoke about it earlier. It was slow off the start line as well. Yes, yeah, something's going on with the car, but he's got the candle lit and he's full tyre speed down the front straight now. He's in the outside zone at turn number one. The switchback through two, really wide, perfect outside line there. Dale Campaign playing catch up in the tyre smoke at this point in time, blazing over the finish line, and that is the end of that lap. All right, let's check out the tri-ace replay of the final battle. Scott Shembury blazing the gear down the front straight, pushing nice and wide. Dale Campaign's got to play catch up at this point. How can you see through that tyre smoke? But he does emerge and the flick through the last corner and Scott Shembury is just full noise over the finish line and completely smoked out the joint. We cannot see a single thing. Yeah, the speed from the 350Z, but this late start here is what we need to have a look at. Dale Campaign, though, carries on, though. He gets back into it, decides, no, we are going to battle this out. And Scott Shembury goes that outer clipping zone. Doesn't quite fill it all the way, but this second outer clipping zone, look at it, all the way through the final one, and he is on the blaze there. Scott Shembury just gets the right foot down. Once those turbos lay the boost into the LS, there is no stopping the tyre spin. Look at the speed he carries into turn number one. A little bit of correction there from the front steering. You can see Dale Campaign a little bit slower in the background there with that late start into the drift. Really hard for the judges to see that too as it was over the top of the hill from where they were sitting. But let's head down to our winner's podium now for the High Tech Alls Pro Category. Ladies and gentlemen from Tasmania, there he is. Take your big check and your silverware. Very well done, mate, for getting third position today. Look like some, maybe some car gremlins coming into that last little battle, but you put it all on the line all day. Talk us through, how do you feel? How was the day for you? Honestly, I'm just stoked. Every time I drive the car, I was just having fun. Uh, a little bit annoying that we had a few mechanicals at the end of the day, but still, I'm, I'm pretty happy with third place. And it kind of gets us a little bit back in the championship, I think, so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the moment of truth. First and second place for round three. I'll call second place first, and it is Dale Campaign. Means Scott Shambury gets the win, ladies and gentlemen. Dale Campaign gets position number two. Come forward, mate. Come forward, grab your large check and your silverware. Dale Campaign, look, you uh, had a mini retirement, let's call. You've uh, been out of action for uh, round one and two, but straight on the podium. Very well done. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there, um, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, I'd like to thank all my sponsors. Um, I've got my own billboard, Dad, over there. So uh, Smith Partners, Flowrite, the installations, uh, Einstein keeping the car looking good, um, Zito's, Tunes by CC, the engine just keeps on going. It's so good. Um, down to Earth Electrical, complete alignments, keeping the car straight, um, Super 60, um, fits the performance, sleeker spares, shock works, and PSR turbo. So, uh, massive thanks to that, the crew, everyone, everyone putting on the show, and all the volunteers, judges, everything. So, yeah, it's been a great weekend. Congratulations, second place in your first round back for the season. It's a pleasure to have you here. So, thank you so much. And last but not least, Mr. Scott Chambry, take a step forward, Master Chef. Take your silverware. Wowee, after the battles of today and everything that's transpired today, from all the pit commentary, talking to Cookie and seeing your face, you were just so stoked, you were so ready for today. Talk us through, mate, how do you feel? Uh, stoked, man. Obviously, um, I did miss a gear coming off the line and obviously the judges saw it, so I just want to say, obviously, sorry to Dale. Uh, it would have been better if we, like, took off at full speed, but, you know, it's taken a while to get this car sorted. Um, it's there now. It's just big thanks to Raf for his hard work, Georgie, all the Blaze unit team, so like, I'm just stoked to be here, man. It's been a long run and feels like a bit of a weight lifted off my shoulders now, so let's just roll on to the next round and keep it singing. No, fantastic stuff, mate. Very well done. You're driving fantastic today. Take that top step on the podium. Well deserved. Round of applause for all of our pro category drivers.
Great to see Scott Shembury back on the top step of the podium after several years. He's really excited about the win. Coming away from this weekend, Jordan Sanderson now leading the championship in both Zoot Performance Pro-Am and the High Tech Oils Pro category. A strong contender in this year's championship. Fantastic round here from Winton Motor Raceway in Victoria. Next time we make it out there, it's going to be from sunny Queensland for round number four, the 19th and 20th of August. We head north to where it's nice and warm. And, of course, the action will heat up out on track. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. We can't wait for you to join us. We'll see you there. And our final round of the series now relocated to Calder Park Raceway with the new dates of 4th and 5th of November. But make sure you join us up in Queensland. For tickets and further details, make sure you go to the website, hightechdriftingaustralia.com.au.